bringing a project to a group of landowners and helping them understand the project and, and, uh, and that, that becomes a whole series of value-added agriculture. Now they see a way to harvest the value of the wind. It's the most fun I've ever had in my life. I've you know, done a lot of things in the last 30 years and the last seven or eight years have been far and away the most fun. My name's Pat Pelstring. I'm uh, actually one of the founders and officer of National Wind. Day to day, I'm a wind developer. As a wind developer, really direct uh, what will turn out to be about a 30,000 acre site. Uh, we need to go out and tie up the land. Uh, we gotta assess the wind. We'll put up met towers. And uh, the key thing is getting the transmission interconnection done. But once all those things are completed, we've got a site that we can start marketing to utilities and doing the more specific planning of, of a layout of a wind park and talking to utilities about buying the power from us. I spent about half the time in the office. Uh, obviously, a lot of phone calls, following up with people, uh, a lot of computer work, you know, financial analysis and review. Uh, the other half is pretty much in the field. I mean, we're out talking to landowners, uh, out visiting with people to get projects financed. Uh, we need to be out in the field with our consultants, understanding the site and, and making a lot of decisions on the fly, you know, out in the field. Uh, the office is open from uh, 8.30 to 5. Uh, last night I was at a public hearing until about 10.30 at night. So, uh, you know, I'll get my 60 or 70 hours in one way or the other. That's fairly common for the industry. I've got a four-year Bachelor of Arts degree. Uh, I spent uh, quite a bit of time in, in finance. Believe it or not, I was a philosophy major, which uh, may not sound like it's that applicable, but uh, you know, you do a lot of problem solving. I spent uh, about 20 years in community economic development. I'd been, you know, dealing with uh, landowners and, and in rural communities for a long time anyway, working on projects. I, I really came at it from a business finance standpoint. Most of our employees have come from other fields. Uh, real estate developers, um, we've got some uh, marketing specialists that have come out of marketing and sales. Really any kind of uh, active problem solving development activity, pretty good background. Everybody's got their laptop and you know you need those in the field as well. Um, but in addition to that, for instance, we'll have MET towers. A lot of GPS, you know, the, the winds are um, based upon uh, the topography, elevation, so we'll send people out with uh, GPS and, and uh, equipment like that to help assess a site. You know, there's a lot of title work that needs to be done, so people that are used to uh, working with, uh, you know, the county courthouse and being familiar with understanding the documents there, that's pretty important. It took me about six or eight months to kind of understand what the key in terms of being successful in the job is. But the one that keeps ringing true is, is you really need to be a problem solver. If, uh, if it, this is a two or three or four year process to start from ground zero to get a site ready to develop, uh, in the meantime you'll have a thousand problems to solve. And it's a new one every day and you need to be creative, you need to be uh, responsive and persistent. The major misconception is that it's probably a little, uh, from the outside, it looks a little easier than it actually is. Uh, you know, you take these turbines and you set them up and connect them to the grid, that's what most people see. Uh, actually getting the power sold, uh, getting the landowners comfortable with the projects, the transmission and interconnection is a tremendously complicated process and there might be 10 or 12 developments competing for one project and so you need to be able to position your project and make it worthwhile and, and to, to get the contract. It's becoming much more sophisticated in terms of specialization. Um, I, I know a little bit about everything in the industry but now we're hiring, we've got a staff of six people and all they do is worry about our wind data and you know how we set up the med towers, how we collect it, what's the value of the wind. Generally the more successful companies are the ones that are getting larger and that they've, they've got more specialization so they can attack those, each of those issues. 
education's important to us. Uh, we think it's a, it's certainly, uh, it may not apply directly to what they're going to do day to day, but it, it clearly demonstrates their interest and commitment to moving forward. The other thing I would say is that people really need to learn the industry. Uh, when we get the volume of people that are interested, if they haven't checked out our website, know our projects, understand a lot of the basics of wind, it shows through very clearly. And the people that have, those are the ones that get the extra attention. This really brings a lot of the features of, of what I've done in my life together. Uh, I love to work with people. I love to solve problems. And even though it takes two, three, four, five years before you build a project, the satisfaction of getting there is, is tremendous.